Good. Uh, nice to be here and to see you all. Um, theological research is firmly linked to the founding myth of the digital humanities. The Index Thomisticus by the Jesuit Prize Roberto Busa, which began in 1946, is often cited as the starting point of the digital humanities, even though there uh, is, for example, Josephine Miles, a scholar of English poetry, who worked on a concordance to the poetry of John Dryden using punched cards and early computers that was published in 1957, whereas the first volumes of the Index to Mysticus appeared in 1974. However, while many other disciplines, such as history or classical philology, have since developed their own branches of digital research, digital history, digital classics, uh, this, devel devel this development is still in its beginning in theology. For example, it finds no place in this model of spheres by Patrick Saale, which is often illustrated in the age presentations. The reasons why theology has moved from the center to the periphery of the digital humanities are manifold and cannot be elaborated in this 10-minute talks. Instead, the question here is how this situation can be changed and how theology can be anchored in the DH canon of disciplines. My colleague Frederike van Orschott and I are currently leading the Theolab, a research network for digital theology at Heidelberg University. In this context, we don't want to reflect on the phenomenon of digitalization or to think about digital ethics, as is usually the case in the theological research landscape, but rather to focus on classical theological research but with digital methods and tools, and thus bring theology together with the digital humanities. Convincing our colleagues of the usefulness of this project was often difficult. We repeatedly observe that the potential of the age to answer theological research questions is underestimated. For instance, the understanding of the age activities is limited on digitizing texts and modeling networks. Theology students in our seminars that dealt with computational theology stated in the evaluations that they did not see the relevance of that all. Clifford Anderson, for example, also sees this as a reason for the age's lack of resonance in theology. From this, we concluded that it was especially important to convince the old guards, the professors of the value of the age, since they had to apply the age in order to communicate its relevance to students. But the age were not only seen as useless, but also as problematic. Great reservations um, still prevail against computational practices. Digital humanists uh, would want to replace established research practices, but would not provide new insights and so on. In this place, I certainly do not need to elaborate on what can be read in similar form in Stanley Fish, Nanset Da, and many others. Finally, there are um, the technical hurdles to consider. Gregory Crane, to cite just uh, one example among many, said in a German language interview when asked whether humanities scholars could ever apply modern algorithms themselves, from my point of view, we have to. If we want to do the best research, which should always be our aim, we need the best algorithms. We need to develop them ourselves because we don't just need old algorithms that are already made and meant for other applications. That's why we need to learn to program. As a result, many humanities scholars don't even bother with digital humanities because, according to them, it takes too much time. So for us, there were several factors to consider. To show that theological research with the age approaches can be more than just the gimmick of a few lonely nerds in their institutes, we had to focus on applicability. To achieve this, we need to start from specific use cases so we wanted to find a way to show that the research practices, methods, and tools of the digital humanities can be made fruitful for concrete questions of theological research. At the same time, we wanted to make this as accessible as possible, which is why the creation of a glossary to explain technical terms is essential. Various examples of an efficient glossary are already available in the DH community. The most recent one, as far as I know, is currently in a public peer review process, a working paper of the DHD working group theory 
in the Zeitschrift für digitale Geisteswissenschaften. However, there may be several, but new ones must always be created, tailored precisely to the target group and the material presented. Defining the digital humanities is a subject of endless controversy, and I will skip the hundreds quote from Matthew Kirschenbaum here. This may be due in part to the fact that this field with its applications and methods is enormously um, uh, diverse. However, the age shares this characteristic with theology. Here too, interdisciplinarity is present in a wide range. And just as, let's say, poimenic sets pastoral care in uh, care studies can only be inadequately explored with exegetical methods of biblical hermeneutics, not every area of the digital humanities is suitable for every theological discipline. Therefore, we did not want to speak of the digital humanities and the theology, but to work out in a discipline-specific approach which the age applications could be particularly fruitful for which theological discipline and which combinations seem rather unsuitable. We were interested not only in the adaption of methods and tools, but also in the use of collaborative research practices as often performed in the DH. However, this is usually very unfamiliar to theological researchers and requires a lengthy justification. Through a discursive process, we hope to achieve all the more quality it is not enough to pure one's own thoughts into a paper, but all participants are encouraged to deal with the papers of the others and to assert their position in workshops. All these aspects finally led us to the conception of the compendium computational theology. According to applicability, the aim of this project is to provide an introduction to the methods and approaches of the age tailored to theological research perspectives. In the first volume, authors of the DH community present an introduction to their research practices and introduce an object of analysis, a method or a distribution practice with use cases, potentials and limitations. The authors of the second volume will receive these contributions in advance with the task of exploring the potentials for their respective theological disciplines. In a workshop, the chapters are discussed and reflected upon together. The results are then published in the second volume. After the second volume has been published, all authors of both volumes meet again at the final conference. The authors of the first volume now have the opportunity to review the results of volume two and to refine their articles for a second edition, for example, if they feel that certain potentials have not been recognized. In order to be received as widely as possible, the volumes uh, will be published by Heidelberg University Press in open access as a print in German, but online bilingually in German and English. The two-volume compendium is rounded off by contributions on epistemological implications. Such a project depends deeply on dialogue. The challenge here is to find a common language. This already starts with the title. Digital theology an expression that seems plausible from the age's point of view in analogy to digital history and so on, is a collective term that was already used by Johanna Habera in 2015 and can be applied much more extensively. Here, questions about the possibility of digital communion, communion can be dealt with as well as the sense and nonsense of blessing robots or the formulation of digital ethics. Theology with digital means plays only a minor role. In order to separate ourselves from this, we chose the term computational theology and saw in this an analogy to the rise of computational humanities, which wanted to distinguish themselves from the big tent of the DH in order to bring technical aspects to the fore. However, this term also has its downsides. Sarah Lang has made clear that the term computational humanities can also spread a form of toxic masculinity so that the choice of this term could cause irritation on the part of the DH community. Therefore, it is important to take an explicit position on this to disclose the reasons for choosing the term and to clearly distance oneself from any form of discrimination. Interdisciplinarity is above all a great communicative challenge, but if it's accepted, it is possible to convince the old guards and to establish the age in a tradition, discipline, as a kind of revolution through collaboration. And then I will give a short view in the um, table of content. Um. Ooh. <laughs> 
this would be volume uh, one about um, deals with different DH media, exemplarily the forms of digital text analysis, practices of dissemination, as well as selected cross-cutting issues. And volume two, I'm nearly the end, includes the various theological disciplines as well as likewise uh, selected cross-cutting issues. And finally, there are framing chapters on epistemological and terminology implications. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.